good evening, everyone, and welcome to Meet Touchstone Essentials Live Product Training Edition. I'm here with Cindy Clement. Hi, Cindy. Hi. <laughs> good to be with you again. Yes. It was just last week, huh? This one I know. Fast. It's it's a busy busy summer in my world. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I want to make sure that you all know who Cindy is. Uh, Cindy's a, a good friend of mine. We've known each other for a long time, and there's a new picture every time. A new picture. I love it. Where's this, Cindy? This is uh, Lake Tahoe. My husband and I went hiking up a mountain and this was at the top. There was like a boardwalk and it was just so beautiful. Beautiful. Lake Tahoe is a beautiful area. Just in July. Mm -hmm. In July. So just, yeah. just recent. Yeah. Uh, yeah. For, for those that don't know, uh, Cindy is uh, an acclaimed speaker, published author, nutritionist, herbalist, adjunct professor. Uh, you name it, she can do it all. She's a passionate person about... Uh, health and natural health and nutrition. Um, and uh, she's, she's just really good at what she does. And she loves to educate people and, and tell people all about nutrition. She trains the doctors uh, mm -hmm. how to do nutrition. And we're, we're really privileged to have her here with us. I want to make sure you know about her book, Your Body's Environmental Chemical Burden. And that uh, is really important to us at Touchstone Essentials, since we focus on detox and zeolite. Uh, mm -hmm. So you'll want to be aware of her book. And the uh, Fulvic Minerals Plus now. So, and right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Fulvic Minerals Plus. Thanks for bringing that up. Uh, what are we going to talk about tonight, Cindy? Well, tonight we are going to be talking about um, anti-nutrients, stress and anti-nutrients. So we know which things that we're doing affect our nutrient levels. And thank goodness we have great products that can replace all those deficiencies in our body. So that's our topic tonight. You brought up, uh, when we first talked about anti-nutrients, that really captured my attention. It's like, we usually talk about nutrients and talk about the benefits of nutrients, but anti-nutrients, that's a, that's a new thing. It uh, is. Interesting yeah. topic. I can't wait to learn. Yeah. Well, we're excited to learn learn about about this uh, stress and anti nutrients. So take it away. All right. Thanks, Craig. So good evening, everybody. Um, so we're going to talk about, as Craig mentioned, stress and which is our major anti nutrient, and then some of the others that you might not have considered before. But folks, stress has many faces, and it creeps into our lives from every which way, every direction. And no matter what causes it, stress puts the body and our mind on edge. And I'm sure at one point in your life, we've all you know, been under a lot of stress. So we're all familiar with what happens under stress. But stress can be something like bumper to bumper traffic when we're in a hurry. It can be a worrisome illness. It can be an argument with our partner or a job that has turned sour or it's caring for an ailing parent or a pile of unpaid bills. Um, it can also include worries about the state of our world today, which, you know, there's a lot to worry about at that point, too. So, but what I want to really str uh, stress and what I really want to talk about is that stress isn't all bad. Stress, think of it this way, can be related to the tension on a violin string. So we need just enough tension to make music, but not so much that it makes it snap, makes the, the string snap. And so if we don't have any tension or stress in our lives, no challenges in our lives, we don't learn and we don't grow and we become stagnant and we don't develop our talents. So we need a little bit of stress. We'll call that acute stress, but we certainly don't need that chronic stress. Because unfortunately, chronic stress can lead to high blood pressure and heart disease. It can increase our susceptibilities to colds and infections. It can contribute to asthma and digestive disorders and cancer. And there's even new research that's supporting the notion that high levels of stress end up speeding up that aging process, which is something we're going to talk about in two weeks, that um, aging process and, and what we can do to kind of curb that as best we can. Um, oops, I want to go back to that a little bit more. Chronic stress is also associated with other health concerns, things like mental health disturbances, anxiety, depression, 
And then neurodegenerative problems such as Alzheimer's disease, stress can be related to metabolic disorders such as metabolic syndrome or type two diabetes, obesity. It can also interfere with sleep. And additionally, stress creates conditions in our body for inflammation to flourish. And that in turn sparks these diseases and conditions in the body. So stress is perhaps one of the biggest anti-nutrients known to man, but when you add this to the mix of an unhealthy diet and unhealthy lifestyle habits that usually accompany it, it's no wonder that we can be left seriously nutrient deficient, lacking in energy and really struggling to get our mojo back after a particularly hectic patch. The National Institute of Child Health and Human Development says that between 70 and 80% of all visits to the doctor are stress-related. So chronic stress depletes our body's resources and our body's ability to adapt to the stress. There's a famous physician, his name is Dr. Hans Seeley, and in the 1920s, he was the first scientist <clears throat> to identify stress as a foundation for the signs and symptoms of illness. And, and this is one of his quotes. He says that if, if stress continues and remains unattended for long periods of time, coping functions will be compromised and illness will result. So stress, it actually prevents nutrient absorption and or uses nutrients at a higher rate. And this creates a profoundly negative effect on our body's nutrient stores, which again is why we often feel like we're depleted or lacking energy during times of stress. So it's of, of great importance then that we properly nurture our body and, and provide it with nutritious foods uh, during those stressful periods in order to protect our health and to, to build resistance. However, some people cope with stress by drinking alcohol or eating more comfort foods, including sugar, or using caffeine to increase their energy. They smoke more cigarettes, they drink more soda, they may be using some kind of illegal drugs, all at a time when more nutrients are needed. So stress is a great anti-nutrient, but there are others, and one of them is sugar. The United States consumes more sugar than any other country in the world, a hundred years ago, the average adult consumed less than 10 pounds of sugar per year. But by 2016, the average adult consumed approximately 90 pounds of sugar. That's nine times more than our ancestors. And, and just for your information, 90 pounds of sugar a year means that a person is consuming 26 teaspoons of sugar each day. Now, I'm certainly not eating that. I doubt Craig is, and neither are most of, of you folks. So some adults then are eating even more of that in order to get that average. So if you're eating too much sugar, you're more than likely going to be deficient in vitamin D, in calcium and magnesium, in vitamin C, and in chromium. Now, a big source of sugar, of course, is soda. Sales peaked about 22 years ago. They peaked at, believe it or not, 53 gallons per person in the United States every year. Recent numbers, however, have shown that that 53 has gone down to 39 gallons per year, but that is still a lot of soda. Again, I don't drink soda, so someone's drinking my 39 gallons. So sugar, sodas, those are really important anti-nutrients. Now, alcohol. 
According to April 2020, uh, a report from the National Institute of Alcohol Abuse and Alcoholism, Americans' alcoholic consumption reached, goodness, almost 8 billion gallons in 2018. And if you figure there's about 258 million adults in the U.S., that equates to 30 gallons of alcohol per adult every year. Again, I know I don't drink that. I don't drink any alcohol. So think about that. And alcohol is a type of sugar as well. Alcohol reduces the uh, nutrient stores in your body of vitamin B, vitamin C, of calcium, magnesium, of zinc, iron, potassium, chromium, manganese, as well as antioxidants. So when people think, oh, I will cope, you know, with drinking more alcohol or eating more sugar or eating more of these comfort foods, they're only making the situation worse. Now, tobacco. The total number of cigarettes reported sold by manufacturers in 20, uh, 2019 was 203 billion units of cigarettes. But again, nicotine is going to deplete your vitamin E, your vitamin C, biotin, and not even to mention the toxicants in cigarettes. So let's talk a little bit about caffeine. Notice I put excessive caffeine, too much caffeine. Every day, about 80% of Americans consume caffeine in some form, and more than half of the adults consume about 300 milligrams a day. And so that really is America's most popular drug, but 300 milligrams is the limit that we need to shoot for. But coffee moderate to smaller amounts of coffee is not a bad thing. According to Johns Hopkins uh, Medical Center, coffee can, when you drink it in, in, or caffeine, I will say, coffee or caffeine in small amounts can positively impact your health. It assists in liver production. It helps the body to use glucose better. You're more than you're more less likely to develop a heart attack or a stroke. You're less likely to develop Parkinson's disease or Alzheimer's disease. They say Johns Hopkins says your DNA will be stronger. Your odds of getting colon cancer will go down. So there are benefits, but again, everything in moderation. Everything in moderation. But I want to just take this a step further when we talk about excessive caffeine. Besides coffee, think about, or tea, think about where else people are getting caffeine. Five-hour energy drink is now selling 9 million servings of their product every week. 9 million servings. Now remember, this product is to provide energy for a short period of time. And how this all came to be was in 1997, Red Bull hit the market. And what they did is they gave college students free samples regularly during nightclub promotions or when, when college students had their finals. And then the students got hooked and they spent two to four dollars per can. So sales of Red Bull um, at 20 years ago, sales were 200 million. Last year in the U.S. alone, sales of Red Bull were one and a half billion dollars. And folks, this is just a huge indicator of the needs of our society for energy and focus and clarity. Uh, the next one on our list are prescription drugs. The statistics show that between the ages of 50 and 64, the average adult fills 13 prescriptions every year. Once you reach 65 to 79, they say that the average adult is going to fill 20 prescriptions per year. Well, I'm 70 and I don't fill any, but I take care of myself. After the age of 80, they say that the average American will fill 22 prescriptions. Oh my word. So let's just take oral contraceptives for an example. When you're taking oral contraceptives, they deplete folate, which is vitamin B9, 
and the other B vitamins, B1, B2, B3, B6, B12. Oral contraceptives deplete your vitamin C, zinc, selenium, and trace minerals. So if you're curious about, a, I'm not telling you not to take a prescription drug, but if you're curious to see what's being depleted, it's pretty easy. Just, just Google or whatever your search engine is, just Google the words nutrient depletion and then fill in the drug. And you'll have to do a little bit of, of digging, but more than likely you'll come up with a National Institutes of Health link or a Medline link that will show you those nutrients. And it's, it's really profound. And then what you do is you go back and you watch those webinars that we did individually talking about each of the vitamins individually in another webinar talking about the minerals. And you begin to see why people feel so badly today. They've got a poor diet, they're getting too much sugar and alcohol and tobacco, and gosh, they might be overeating. So yes, overeating, but it's also the quality of the food that you're eating. So for instance, years ago, but I always remembered this, Consumers Report did a kind of a little presentation where a person could eat about 1,400 calories a day and get zero nutrition. So here's what they would eat. And now notice that I, I keep saying low carb, low carb, right? Because people think, oh, it's low carb. It must be good for me. Well, a person eating this diet would be hungry all day long. There would be no fiber, no protein, and no nutrients. And yet they would be getting 1400 calories. So this is what they came up with. A 12 ounce Michelob Ultra beer, two one ounce packages of Atkins Cruncher's chips, a cup, one cup of Atkins Indulge vanilla ice cream, two Carborite, I don't even know what those are, two Carborite chocolate chip cookies, one eighth of an Entenmann's carb counting cake, and lastly, 10 pieces of Russell Stover low carb pecan delight chocolate. Okay, so they ate 1,400 calories, but there isn't one drop of nutrition in there and listen to all the sugar and starches that they got in that. So it's a pretty pretty crazy story. So there's lots that you can do to protect against the negative effects of stress. And the first step is to ensure that your diet supplies plenty of those key nutrients that are rapidly depleted when the emergency stress re response kicks in. So increasing the intake of these vitamins and nutrients on this screen can help to protect against the adverse effects of stress. So we're gonna go over all six of these and we'll start with magnesium. Magnesium is a very powerful mineral. It has widespread benefits throughout the body. It's responsible for over 300 different biochemical reactions in the body. So it's no coincidence that it is at the top of this list. Stress depletes magnesium. However, magnesium is needed for a healthy stress response to help us deal with stress. So making sure that we get magnesium is essential during those times of stress. And multiple studies have demonstrated that when a person is using magnesium and getting more magnesium foods into their diet, there is an improved stress response as well as an antidepressant and an anti uh, anxiety effect that one could experience. So where do we get magnesium in Touchstone Essentials products? Well, we get it in uh, cocoa, in the brain focus field. We get it in grapes, in essentials. We get magnesium in kelp and kale and oak grass and spirulina in our super green juice. And we get quinoa and fermented rice in organic super protein. So we get, whoops, I should have given you that slide. Hold on. I'm, what am I doing here? Hold on. I got to, I got to figure out where I'm at. Okay. Yes. I'm right there. Good gracious. All right. <laughs> All right. Next on the list, vitamin C. Vitamin C stimulates adrenal functioning. It protects the calcium in our body, it protects our hormones, it, it protects our enzymes from destruction, 
But of course, vitamin C is also known for its immune supporting qualities. Now, vitamin C can often be overlooked when it comes to stress, but it really is critically important. Here's why. Humans are among only a few mammals that cannot produce vitamin C. And for most other mammals, vitamin C production naturally increases with stress. So since our bodies can't do this, we have to rely on our diets to regularly keep vitamin C stores up. And this is especially important during times of stress. So we get our vitamin C in organic super protein, in essentials, super greens plus D, and super green juice. Now, the B vitamins, they are vital for the nervous system. Um, they lend a, a sense of well-being. They encourage calmness. They work with hormone production and balancing, but they're water-soluble and very little of them are stored in our body. So they need to be replenished often. So spreading our supplements throughout the day ensures that we're going to be able to replenish the water-soluble vitamin B and vitamin C as well, because again, stress depletes these vitamins. And so the higher intakes are required when we are under stress. Now, zinc, the typical Western diet is low in zinc. Zinc plays an important role in supporting our immune system and modulating or regulating our body's stress response. And since it's also rapidly used up during times of stress, we've got to get more of it. Um, results, this is a, a, a interesting study that I found, is the results from human studies indicate that acute stress exposure, so again, acute is, is um, um, something like endurance exercise. Endurance exercise is a, a physical stressor because you're stressing the body. It's an acute stressor. But that, even, even something like endurance exercise is associated with lower zinc concentrations in the body. So imagine what chronic stress would do to someone um, with a, you know as that zinc is being depleted. And when it comes to iron, they did this a really interesting study where after just five days of physical and psychological stress in Navy SEAL trainees, so you can imagine what their, their, their boot camp was like, in just five days, their iron concentrations decreased 44%. So again, this just goes to show you that all of these nutrients are so vital. And when we are not supplying these nutrients on a regular basis, and we're undergoing this stress, we're, we're ending up with these depleted stores, which then again, affect us physically and emotionally. So it's really important that we kept, keep up with them. Now, calcium, our, our last one on the list, lower bone mineral densities, uh, so mostly calcium, have been observed in people experiencing chronic psychological stress. They did an examination of about 16,000 adults, and they found this correlation between bone mass density and psychological stress. And they found it particularly in men and, and premenopausal women. So the more stress the person was under, the more calcium was taken from their bones to try and keep the body in balance. So it's really important. There was another study, a smaller study with just 135 postmenopausal women and showed that the lower their bone mineral density, so the lower their calcium levels, there was more depression, anxiety, stress, and insomnia. So again, you know, we're getting these nutrients in our products. We are supporting our body. So when that, when stress comes at us, our bodies can handle that stress. So what else do we need to include in our bodies during signs uh, or, or during times of stress? So for sure, we need protein. 
Protein can help to balance the blood sugar levels, but it's required for all new cell growth in the body, including immune cells. Protein is the building block of every cell in the body. It creates hormones. It has a big job. So we do need more protein under stress. The probiotics are important because 70 to 80% of our immune cells are reliant on our gut. So if we correct our gut, we support a stronger immune system. Um, omegas, omegas help to reduce that inflammation and, and protect our cell membranes from damage. Remember, um, the omegas are, they're called a lipid, a fat, and our cell membranes are fatty. And inflammation destroys that. Well, if we've got a lot of, of, of poor dietary choices, creating inflammation, stress creating inflammation, it's going to damage those cells. So getting our omegas is going to protect us even more so. But let's talk a little bit about matcha, which is found in super green juice. This, this vibrant green tea is, is really popular among a lot of health enthusiasts because it's rich in something called L-theanine. And this is a non-protein amino acid, but it has powerful stress-relieving properties. L-theanine is mainly found in green tea, black tea, as well as in some, some types of mushrooms. They did a very small study with 15 or a 15 day study with about 36 people and what these people did these these they ate cookies containing four and a half grams of matcha powder each day. And the results showed that they experienced a significantly reduced activity of stress markers in the body when compared to the placebo. Uh, the placebo group. Now, I got to say, you know, eating two cookies a day um, or eating, you know, a lot of cookies every day might have just made them happier, but I don't think so. I believe it was the matcha. Oops, let's go back. Sweet potatoes. Sweet potatoes can lower our levels of the stress hormone cortisol. Now, Cortisol levels are really tightly regulated in our bodies, but chronic stress can lead to something called cortisol dysfunction, which then causes inflammation, pain, obesity, and other adverse effects in our body. But sweet potatoes are packed with nutrients that are important for stress response, such as vitamin C and potassium, parsley, found in super green juice and super greens plus D is especially rich in carotenoids, flavonoids, and other types of volatile oils, all which have powerful antioxidant properties. And remember, antioxidants are components that neutralize these unstable molecules called free radicals, and they protect against what is called oxidative stress. And oxidative stress is associated with many illnesses, including mental health disorders like depression and anxiety. And studies suggest that when we get a diet rich in antioxidants, it helps prevent stress and anxiety. It can help reduce that inflammation. And that's often very high in people with chronic stress. Now, artichokes, which are found in essentials, super green juice and super greens plus D, they're an incredibly uh, concentrated source of fiber. They're especially rich in prebiotics, which is that type of fiber that feeds your gut. And remember that brain gut connection? If we are feeding our gut the prebiotics and the probiotics can help reduce that, that mental stress as well. And one review, one study demonstrated that, that people who got prebiotics every day experienced improved anxiety and depression symptoms. But along with fiber, artichokes are also high in potassium, magnesium, vitamin C, and all of which are needed for that healthy uh, stress response in our bodies. Now, broccoli, super greens plus D, super green juice, essentials, 
cruciferous vegetables. So we call them cruciferous because um, a, a crucifix is a cross, right? The crucifix is a tree, I should say. And when you cut a cruciferous vegetable like cauliflower or broccoli or Brussels sprouts, when you cut them in half, it looks like a little bit of a tree. And that's where they, they got their name for crucifix or crucifer or cruciferous, I'm sorry, uh, vegetables. So they have... Uh, very well documented health benefits, but a diet rich in cruciferous vegetables can help to, to reduce our risk of certain cancers, of heart disease, as well as mental health disorders. And, and broccoli itself is one of the most concentrated food sources of nutrients, including, once again, magnesium, vitamin C, and vitamin B9, which these nutrients have been proven to combat depressive symptoms. Broccoli is also rich in sulfur, which has neuroprotective, so brain and nervous system protection properties, and offers this very calming and antidepressant effects. Now, blueberries, which are found in super green juice and in essentials, they're also associated with a number of health benefits, including an improved mood, and, and they can help safeguard against depression. They're, they're high in flavonoid antioxidants, and that too has very powerful anti-inflammatory and neuroprotective effects in the body. We did another webinar on antioxidants and oxidative stress. So if you haven't uh, check that one out yet. Go ahead on your free time. You don't really have to, to really see the slides. You can just listen to it. You know what I mean? While you're driving or making dinner, you can catch up on some of these webinars. Now, blueberries can help reduce stress-related inflammation and protect against stress-related cellular damage in the body. But let's not forget our adaptogenic plants. Rhodiola rosea, eleuthero root, ginseng, all of these plants support the stress response and recovery by strengthening the body's stress response while fighting back against fatigue. So what adaptogens do is they help the body adapt to stress. So the stress doesn't change. The stress coming at you doesn't change, but your reaction or your response to that stressful situation can change for the better when you have adaptogenic herbs. So the adaptogenic herbs are found in super green juice and brain focused fuel. And what these plants do is they, they mediate the output of those stress hormones. They, they help you feel calmer and more relaxed. They give you clearer thinking, which is always necessary in a stressful situation to really be able to think clearly. Adaptogenic herbs can increase our immunity and they can improve our performance under stress. So as we mentioned, nutrients are rapidly deteriorated um, and depleted during stress. But by using your Touchstone Essential products, you have the solution to stress and other anti-nutrients. And if you're, I think you should be feeling really good about taking your, your Touchstone Essentials supplements on a daily basis. And one other thing I'd like to mention is if you're curious about uh, watching um, a video on uh, mind over matter or, uh, um, you know, just kind of stress relief, the University of Wisconsin, and, and I should have put the link on the slide, but the University of Wisconsin has a number of resources available. They're, they're a holistic medical center at the university. What I would invite you to do is just in your, in your search engine, just put University of Wisconsin and then just put FAM Ed. So it's no FAM Med, it's a family medicine. So University of Wisconsin and, and then FAM Med is one word, family medicine. And then just put stress and the link will come up and it will take you to their website, which is just an amazing website. They love holistic medicine. They love nutrition. And they've got a whole website that's dedicated to anyone. You don't have to be a patient or a doctor or you know anybody like that. You can have access to it. It's really 
phenomenal. Dr. David Rakel was responsible for creating this website. He's since moved to the University of Arizona with Dr. Andrew Weil. But if you get a chance to visit the University of Wisconsin FAMED, F-A-M-M-E-D, two M's in the middle, and then just put stress, you'll find amazing resources. So I hope that helps a little bit. So that concludes our presentation this evening, and I'm going to invite you to join us again on August 18th when we do our webinar on anti-aging strategies. So there you go. Wonderful. Thank you, Cindy. Well done, as always. Uh, really interesting conversation about anti-nutrients. Thank you so much. And I look forward to talking about anti-aging coming up on the 18th. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for being with us tonight. Everybody have a wonderful evening. We'll see you soon. Good night. Good night, everybody.